Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how you can file your VAT return within QuickBooks Online. So most of the time, people are forced into QuickBooks because of a little thing called making tax digital or VAT. And people are always finding the question of how do I actually file my VAT return within QuickBooks Online? And today, we're going to have a look exactly how that's done. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer for QuickBooks themselves, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also head of accounts here at Boffix. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how you can file your VAT return with ease and making it really straightforward. So let's not mess around, let's get straight into it and find out exactly how you can file your VAT return. Okay, before we file the VAT return, please, please, please just heed this little bit of advice. You need to be making sure that you've gone through each one of your bank accounts, that you've connected to QuickBooks Online, and make sure you have this nice big green tick here. That green tick there indicates that you have added everything into QuickBooks Online. That effectively, you've added your bank account and you've moved from full review into categorised. That means that the transactions that are in categorized now form part of what your VAT return is going to be. So please make sure you got that done. If you see anything else like this EI here, which indicates that there's a problem and that's not actually been connected properly, or this one here, where we've actually got loads of transactions that still need to be done, please make sure these are completed first, because that's gonna be important to make sure that you have everything you have in there for your VAT return. Once that's done though, let's figure out how we go and actually put our VAT return together. Well, I'm looking for my taxes section on the left hand side, and then my VAT section just here. Now as you can see, I now have my VAT center open to me. My VAT center is straight away gonna tell me what I've collected on sale, so what output that I've had, and what I've paid on purchases. I'm gonna give me an indication just here of what it is that I expect to pay, or in this case, receive from HMRC. Top right hand corner gives me a chance to edit my VAT settings. And one of the big ones you wanna be making sure is you edit settings and you wanna be making sure your MTD is turned on. Now that MTD is turned on, I now have the ability to file my VAT return directly in QuickBooks Online. How do I do that? Well, first of all, if you use the drop down arrow just here, you'll notice that the first thing that's available is error check your return. Highly recommend you do this. This gives you the opportunity to let QuickBooks check that return and look for possible errors. So the first thing it's gonna do is tell me what items have a no VAT associated with it. Now, no VAT could be an easy win for you to find any transactions in here that actually should have some VAT on it. Like for here, it seems I've got payment coming in from Aiden, which is from eBay. I've got an opportunity here for UPS Limited. Why is there no VAT associated with that when there may be VAT available to it? So it gives me a chance to check that one. So then I'm going to tell you what items in your bank account have still to be reviewed. Remember I said how important that review stage is? Well, this is going to tell you how important it is. Then it's going to see if there's any duplicated items, any items within consistent back code. So maybe you've put 20% against it in one period, but now you're putting 0% against it now. Why? Well, QuickBooks is going to tell you and ask you that question. And then it's going to ask you for exceptions. Now exceptions are so important with QuickBooks Online and something you really need to be making aware of and understand what it relates to. Exceptions could be one of the areas where you make the biggest mistakes. And what an exception is, is the ability for you to be able to go in there and be able to see exactly what transactions you changed from a previous VAT return. You see, QuickBooks is really clever. If you file a VAT return and then make an adjustment to any transaction that's happening there, they'll appear in your next VAT return as an exception. So every time you see an exception, you must go into it, review it, and then make sure that that is legitimately there. In this case, we filed zero, then we now have 600. So what it makes sense to me, is this transaction was originally omitted from that previous return. You need to be making sure that that's correct. Should it have been omitted? Is there any reason for it to be omitted? Is there a reason we can maybe save it so it doesn't happen again? That's, that's the sort of question you wanna be asking. And you need to be making sure as well, each and every time you ask those questions, is this transaction correct to be an exception in my report? Then it's gonna have an option to look at your largest income transaction 
and your largest expense transaction. We can then see a nice little breakdown of VAT codes used for both income and for expense, and it gives you the opportunity to jump in and review each and every one of them. Finally at the bottom, it gives you the opportunity to prepare now your VAT return. When you prepare now, you'll be presented with this screen. Now currently I've enabled making tax digital turned off to show you the screen, but we're going to show you how you're going to be able to do that going forward. You'll notice that in this transaction, I do have my exceptions right in there. And as I said before, they're transactions that didn't appear on a previous return. I'm clicking into any of the numbers here to see detailed reports. But finally, my way to submit my VAT return is to use the submit button down here, which for me is Marcus Fylde. Once our VAT returns filed, it's not the end of the road. We need to be ensuring at that point that we know exactly what happens in this screen. So in the VAT center itself, you'll notice we have open and filed reports. We also have paid. And we want to be marking a record of payment to show QuickBooks that we've actually made that payment. Final tip, if you opt not to turn my making tax digital on, and you're using this to mark as filed, which is effectively saying that you've filed it somewhere else, especially useful if you bring the data in from a different account in software, then this gives you the opportunity to be able to go in and gives you the chance then, if you've used marked as filed as opposed to making tax digital and submitted it, to go into an open return, and now you have the option to undo this return as well, meaning you can be in full control of how your VAT returns are shown within QuickBooks Online. To make amendments to your making tax digital login details, go to company cog, account and settings, from account and settings, jump into advanced, and then I go to making tax digital, and I use this option here to learn how to connect. That's gonna connect it to your online portal, the same details you need when you log into HMRC itself. And there you have it, a breakdown of how you can actually file your VAT return within QuickBooks Online. Did you like the idea of that video? Well, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel because we have plenty more content to make sure that you're getting the most out of QuickBooks Online. Now, before you go, make sure that you also use the comment section down below to let me know how you are filing your VAT returns. Are you using QuickBooks Online? If not, why not? Because don't forget, we actually have a link in our link tree down below to give you some discounted versions on QuickBooks Online, which means that you could be saving money and making sure that you're keeping most of your profits for yourself. My name has been Aaron Patrick. As always, this video has been an absolute pleasure to do for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and all of that sort of thing. And don't forget that if you want to make the most out of QuickBooks Online, then you're already in the right place. My name is Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chap, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.